working for you. CBS 6 News at 6 starts now. Good evening, I'm Bill Fitzgerald. And I'm Candace Burns. We have team coverage this evening. We're tracking Elsa as the storm moves through central Virginia. Our Wayne Coble is in Colonial Heights where they could see several inches of rain. Cameron Thompson is with Storm Rider 6 in Richmond. He has a look at current road conditions. Meteorologist Mike Stone's in the Weather Center. But first, let's check in with Chief Meteorologist Zach Daniel for an update on the threat in our area. Zach? Well, the rain continues out there. It's just going to be a rain event for us. No high wind expected at all outside of any tornadoes. And there have been a few warnings so far and a couple circulations right now. But what you see behind me is what most of us are contending with, and it's just low visibility and a good bit of light to moderate rainfall, in some cases some heavy rainfall. We do have a tornado watch in effect until 11 o'clock tonight. And looking at to where else is at this time, the circulation is in Mecklenburg County. It is between South Hill and Carr Lake and you see all the rainfall that it continues to crank out ahead of it through the northern neck. We're looking at generally just light rainfall, but heavier rainfall once you get down to the middle peninsula, just a little bit south of Aylet right now and all the way down across Highway 249, Nurse 64, Williamsburg Road down toward Charles City, Providence Forge and Chester. And this continues down the 95 and 85 corridors and now all the way out 460 and 360. Some fairly heavy rainfall. It's now moved into the Powhatan area. Heavy rainfall around Crew and Blackstone as well. And here in the Richmond area, just a lot of moderate rainfall, but a steady moderate rain. And over time, this will accumulate and run off and we'll start to see some flood advisories likely being issued. Look at uh, what's going on farther south. Lunenburg, Mecklenburg, Brunswick counties, anywhere from two and a half to three and a half inches of rain has fallen there. And there is the center of Elsa as of 5 p.m. So it's moved some since then. And uh, winds 50 miles per hour, so actually increased from the earlier advisory at 11 a.m. and it will remain 50 miles per hour as it moves across the Delmarva and then heading on up into the northern latitudes over the next few days. We still have a tropical storm warning over to our east and a flash flood watch all areas in green localized areas up to five inches of rain will be possible. Flash flood warning Lawrenceville area as well as just south of Meharan out in Lunenburg County. Two to four inches of fall and one to two additional. That's until 10 o'clock tonight. And there's your forecast for the rest of this evening. 100% chance of rain through 8 o'clock and then rain chances tapering off and we will be able to close the book on this thing a little bit before midnight tonight. We'll talk more about your forecast coming up in just a few minutes. Thanks, Zach. Our team coverage continues. Let's go to our Cameron Thompson. He is live in Richmond, an area that usually floods. Cameron, how are the roads looking now as the rain continues to come down? Uh, Candace, starting to see a little bit more accumulation. We're at Magnolia and Rady, but nothing to the point that might cause uh, concern at the exact spot where we normally see some flooding and cars stuck in that standing water. That being beneath the uh, underpass that's behind me and you can still see it's still going down through the uh, drainage ditch to the side of the roadway here. You know, this is one of those spots that Richmond Fire tells me more often than not, they are called out to on these heavy rain events and urging drivers to uh, you know, turn around, don't drown when approaching standing water and to not take any chances as a uh, AAA was telling us, you know, not only do you put yourself or your car at risk, you know, you don't know what is underneath this standing water. There could be downed power lines. There could be water rushing out and undermining the road there, and the water could have washed out the road itself. So even though you think it's only two inches deep, you suddenly find yourself in a two or three foot rut because the road's been washed out. It's not worth risking it. And Richmond Fire telling me if you do, however, find yourself in one of those situations where you are stuck in standing water to find the highest ground that you can get to and stay there, that most likely might be the top of your car and to call for help and they'll get to you as quickly as they can. Again, back out here at Magnolia and ready sort of the seeing that steady increase to rain, but not any noticeable cluttered roadways at this time. Working for you in Richmond, Kevin Thompson, CBS 6 News. Uh, that's good to see. Thank you, Cam. And from the city of Richmond to the Tri-Cities, let's go now to Wayne Koval, our senior reporter who's live in Colonial Heights, where they could have higher rain totals by the time the storm is over. Wayne? 
Well, Bill, what a difference an hour makes. About 5 o'clock in the first live shot, rain had just started about 30 minutes earlier. But now, let me tell you, it is coming down, and the wind has definitely picked up. Now, I'm going to step out of the way. Photojournalist Chris Munnings is going to zoom into Interstate 95. I can tell you that the rain started down here in the Tri-Cities, down in Dinwiddie, around 10 o'clock today. Now, it's coming down steady throughout this area. Right now, both uh, there's a tornado watch until 11 p.m. and a flash flood watch until 2 Friday morning. Locally, first responders are telling me that they are preparing for localized flooding in areas prone to flooding during long periods of rain. Most of those would be in your low-lying areas. Now, this morning, both Dominion Energy and Southside Electric Co-op made calls to the localities that they serve. Southside Alert are telling the areas they serve that the cooperative is monitoring the storm closely and they're prepared to respond safely and quickly to power outages. They go on to say that they are prepared with stocked warehouses, prep trucks, and equipment, and they have pre-stage contract crews. Now, we spoke to one of the spokespeople for Southside Electric earlier today. We have protocols in place for storm uh, preparation, power restoration in the event that we are impacted, uh, and we followed those protocols just, just as we have in the past. Um, we don't foresee a significant amount of impact in the storm, but we do feel like it can have impact, especially in the central and eastern part of our service territory. Now in Sussex County, the local government actually shut down around three this afternoon. They wanted to give their employees extra time to get home because again, there is a lot of ponding on the roads. And I can tell you in the last hour or so, definitely a lot more uh, water that is, are on the roads right now. Now a couple of safety points. Don't drive through any flooded waters. Don't drive through any uh, water that's on the road that's standing. Also, if you see a downed power line, just stay away. Also, keep your phone number handy for your power company. If your power goes out, give them a call so they know your power is out. That'll help get them restored quickly. Working for you in Colonial Heights, Wayne Coble, CBS 6 News. Good tips. Thank you very much, Wayne. Another great idea. If you haven't downloaded the CBS 6 weather app, now's a good time to do that. You can get live updates on the forecast as the storm passes through.